See, the answer isn't to take each other for granted and to veg out until your marriage is run, and then you go work hard to get another one. Work hard for the one you have right now. Work, you, have to, you have to work at your marriage. I've been married for 44 years. I still work at my marriage every day. Well, marriage is work, and if I, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 19, and he's quoting the Old Testament, he said, for this cause a man will leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. And three simple secrets of a successful marriage is first, make it a priority. For this cause a man will leave his father and mother. Your father and mother before you get married, that's your most important blood bond. And so when you get married, they have to be second. You have to reprioritize everything. Children, parents, nothing is as important as our marriage rather than Jesus himself. And so you have to make it a priority in real terms. Uh, golf almost destroyed my marriage early on. And I would say with my mouth that I loved my wife and she came first, but reality was golf was before her. Many people put their children before their spouse. It's devastating. And you say, I hear people say, well, I live for my children. That's very short-sighted because children are a temporary project. They come and go. They're going to leave home one day. But your marriage should last for a lifetime. And how are your children going to succeed in marriage if you don't show them how? The first thing you should do for your kids is lead them into an understanding and acceptance of Christ. The second thing that you should do is teach them how to succeed in life, beginning with marriage. You're, you're, their, you're their example. You're their trainer. And so you have to make marriage first. You, you have to, and most of the things that attack the priority of marriage aren't bad things. There are good things out of priority. Work is taking too much time and attention. Church is taking too much time and attention. The kids are taking too much time and attention. God is first. Our marriage is second. Our children are third. Marriage, except for Christ, is the most important priority in our lives. So prioritize it. Number two, you have to work at it. It says, for this cause a man will cleave unto his wife. That means work. That means energy. It means energetically pursue. Marriage only works when you work at it. A lot of people, we pursue each other. We work our faces off, you know, pursuing each other and dating. And we guess what? We fall in love. We fall in love because we're putting so much energy into it. And then once we get married, we begin to take each other for granted. And, and we literally resent having to work, for, uh, work at it. And then we wonder why it's not working. And so when you're not working at your marriage, it doesn't work. And changing people, you know, divorcing and remarrying, that, that's not the answer. I saw a guy one day that I did business with. He, uh, I was working in our family business, and he sold us television advertising. And this is a kind of a normal guy, you know, just kind of a normal-looking, you know, maybe 45-year-old guy. And one day he walked into our store to sell us some advertising, and I greeted him. And I, he had lost 20 pounds, and you know, I mean, he was just well-groomed, well-dressed. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say he was just a total slob before, but he was a, you know, semi-slob. And he walked in and I said, man, you're looking good. And he said, well, I'm divorced. I said, what? He said, well, you can't get a, you can't get a woman if you don't look good. And I was thinking to myself, so for a total stranger, he's going to all this trouble and effort, but he wouldn't do it for his wife. No wonder he lost his marriage. See, the answer isn't to take each other for granted and to veg out until your marriage is ruined and then you go work hard to get another one. Work hard for the one you have right now. Work, you have to, you have to work at your marriage. I've been married for 44 years. I still work at my marriage every day. Marriage is work. Number three, share everything. It has to be a priority. You have to work at it. They too shall become one. And what it means is marriage is about sharing. You don't dominate. The number one thing that violates the oneness of marriage is dominance. Most people were raised in a home where one of their parents was dominant over the other. When I do marriage conferences, and I've done marriage conferences all over the world for many, many years, I've asked a question and I asked it last weekend in Tulsa, Oklahoma. How many of you were raised in a home where one of your parents was clearly dominant over the other parent? Immediately, you know, two-thirds of the hands go up. Immediately. And then I asked the second question. How many of you who just raised your hands believe that that dominance had a negative effect over your parents' marriage and the family? Every hand goes right back up. Sharing everything means no one controls no one dominates. We're partners. We treat each other as equals. If this is a corporation, we both have equals amount of stock. And dominance is, is a gender-neutral issue. There's just as many dominant women as there are dominant men. 
We have to respect each other. We have to share everything, praying and making our decisions together, allowing each other to complain without paying a price. Marriage is first. Marriage is work. And marriage is about sharing. If you do those three things that Jesus said in Matthew 19, that God's Word says in Genesis 2.24, your marriage will work. 